it's time for our first keynote address. And for this, I would like to welcome Dr. Kamal Karnatak, Group CIO, RJ Corp, and President CIOs of India. A PhD from IIT Delhi, Dr. Karnatak is a seasoned CIO with 26 plus years of experience in senior IT leadership positions, adept at delivering business value by cultivating infrastructure from scratch. Um, he motivates and leads high performance teams. He has worked with the Aditya Birla Group, DCM Sriram Consolidated Limited, and Unitech before joining RJ Corp. Dr. Karnatak is also a theater artist, marathoner, and a Himalayan trekker. Dr. Karnatak's topic today is be ready for the future. Over to you, sir. OK, so good morning or good afternoon. We are between morning or noon. So I would say good morning and good afternoon. Once upon a time, uh, there was a bird. The bird name was Dodo. So it's a cautionary tale of a bird which was there at some point of time in 15th century. On the island of Mauritius, there lived a bird. This bird used to live in an area where there was no predators. Contemporary records tells us that this bird was came in this island as a pigeon, and it used to fly very high. In fact, its wings were very powerful. But over a period of time, since there was enough food available in this island, and also there was no predators, the bird has lost its ability of flying. The bird used to swim and it lived and nested on the ground. And in fact, it used to lay only one egg somewhere in 15th century. So things were good for this bird. This bird was enjoying the environment, but something happened which changed the environment in 1587. One ship was coming from Portuguese to Surat, bringing a spice at that point of time, and that ship landed in this island. The sailors were hungry, and they thought this bird can be a good meat for them. So they hunted this bird. The meat was not very good. It didn't taste like chicken. But somehow they found that this island is full of such birds, full of such natural resources. So in 1598, Dutch people started habitating in this particular island. With shellers, with humans, came monkeys, came pigs, came rat, and they started eating this bird. This bird was not sure about this changed environment. She has not started fighting with them. In fact, she used to come with all the humans, all the pigs, all the monkeys. She didn't realize that now environment had changed. So what has happened? Now we say dodos were flightless birds that once inhibited the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. In next 85 years, this bird has vanished from the earth. What has happened to this bird? Is there a fault with the bird or with the environment or with the humans or with the monkeys or pigs? Actually, with the change environment, this bird has not changed herself. While environment was changing, while new predators were coming, while new surroundings were being developed, this bird has not changed herself. This bird has forgotten how to fly. In fact, in 1598, the record suggests this bird became a giant bird of 23 kg with roughly three foot of the height. 
same thing happens with all of us, with our businesses. When we see in the business, there is no predator, the familiar environment, we became giant or businesses became giant. But with the changing environment, we also need to change. So change yourself as an organization, as a business, as an individual with the surrounding or be ready to become a dodo. Welcome to the session, be ready for the future. Changing times need changed perspective. And as they say, change is the only constant thing in this world. Every other thing is changing. So we should also need to change. If we talk specifically about the IT information technology, we know that devices are getting extinct. At some point of time, we used to have handicam, we used to have camera, we used to have telephone, watches, everything came down to a one device called cell phones. Saying this in 2011, Mark Andreessen wrote, software is eating the world. It was 2011, 10 years ago. Now the space has increased tremendously. We have seen in our lifetime, that our desk had changed. Our desk used to have encyclopedia. Our desk used to have calendar, photo frame, lot many things, diaries. But all those things vanished. First they came to the laptops or desktops, then they came to the cell phone. And people are talking maybe next platform can be the goggles or glass. So while environments are changing, there is a new buzzword which is coming that is artificial intelligence. Everybody is talking about artificial intelligence. In this forum also, we are talking about artificial intelligence. I attended two forums yesterday. The theme of both the forum were artificial intelligence. So everybody is talking about artificial intelligence. In fact, people are saying that now even your mundane works would be done through artificial intelligence. So probably human will lose its ability of thinking. But what this artificial intelligence is, should we fear with this phenomena or we should use it? This is what we are going to discuss today. And then I would also like to take you to the automotive industry, how AI is changing the automotive industry at, as a whole. So artificial intelligence has increase the human capabilities. We have power of hearing. We have power of visioning. Long back technology has done it for us. When radio came, we have started hearing all those songs, all those things which were miles away from us. We watch matches, football matches, cricket matches, which are not happening near us, which are happening miles away from us. So technology has given us that power. So artificial intelligence is bringing that power to us. But should we worry? We should worry not of the technology, but of the uses of that technology. As somebody has said recently, our world will change more in next 20 years than in the previous 300 years. But it could be heaven or it could be hell. It depends on the uses of that technology. Same technology, same artificial intelligence, which can be used for good things in automotive, in healthcare, in finance sector. The same can be used by cyber criminals, by terrorists. So it's not the fault of the technology. It's the fault of human. The future is always better than we think if we don't confuse the tool with the purpose. Tool is only the enabler. This is up to us how we use that tool, how we make use of that technology, which can enhance our life, which can enhance our surrounding, which can enhance our future. We have seen in past that people are talking about data. If you see in India, the biggest oil making company Reliance they are moving into technology. They are coming up with geo. So data is like a new oil. If data is new oil, 
then artificial intelligence is the new electricity. So what this artificial intelligence is going to do, this is going to kill all that which is routine. Anything that can be digitized or automated will be the end of routine. Anything which you can define, if you can describe your job, probably in future that job is no longer required. So probably tomorrow artificial intelligence will say, useless humans, why humans are required? But yes, artificial intelligence cannot have the kind of ideas which we, which we human can have. Probably artificial intelligence cannot understand the poem and the nuances of an art, nuances of a of an, uh, poem, cannot write probably the poem. So these are the areas where we humans can have the edge over AI. So everybody is talking, as I said, everybody is talking of AI nowadays. But why now? Suddenly what has happened in, in recent year? If you go back to the history of artificial intelligence, 1947, Alan Turing has written an article about uh, artificial intelligence and he said, can machine think? In fact, Alan Turing uh, has devised a test called Turing test, which is still used to see the efficacy of AI system. In 1950, the Dartmouth conference has happened, which has coined the word called artificial intelligence. But from 50s till now, in, in last 60 years, suddenly in last four or five years, or maybe seven, eight years, people have started talking artificial intelligence very seriously. Why? If you go through the evaluation of technology, there are three precisely things which are happening, which has made this artificial intelligence possible. In fact, uh, this I have taken from a digital transformation exercise, which is done by Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers to A.T. Karni. And, and uh, in this, they have defined three important things, three important paradigm changes which are happening. One, computing power is coming close to human brain. Computers are able to think like humans, not reach there as of now, but yes, they are coming closer. Internet connectivity is becoming faster. We are able to see pictures or movies in a real time. That is the reason OTT app has suddenly come into the existence and people are enjoying all those things. During this lockdown, people have binge watched those web series just because of the internet connectivity. Otherwise, that kind of creativity was earlier also. Third things which is happening, miniaturization. Sensors are becoming smaller. While it is becoming smaller, it is also becoming affordable it is also becoming cheaper. So these are the three primary factors. And fourth factor in my view is the data. There is a huge proliferation of data. In fact, IDC says in 2025, the data which was there 33 jettabyte in 2018, which will become to 175 jettabytes in next three years, next four years, by 2025. So this is the growth of data. Humongous data is being created by us, by sensors, by devices, by a lot of machines. If you just want to understand what is this jettabyte, because it sounds very interesting to hear the word jettabyte. One jettabyte is equivalent to trillion gigabytes. So we all hear gigabytes, GBs. Earlier we used to talk about KBs and MBs. Now people have started talking about GBs, gigabytes. So 175 jettabyte is trillion gigabyte. If you just want to understand, if you put all those data into a DVD, it will take 23 times distance of Earth and Moon, or it will cover entire Earth 222 times. This is the kind of data we are talking about. So with this data, a lot of new things are happening. People are talking about data science. People are talking about machine learning, deep learning, reinforced learning. 
these are the words which people are talking about. Like I said, in 2011, Mark Anderson has written, its software is eating word. I would say its software is eating mobility, not only about car. I'm not talking about car. Many people think automotive is only about car. No. And it, uh, if you see the entire logistic industry, the lo entire transportation industry, it is a $10 trillion economy. And, and car is a very small segment of it. So it's software eating mobility. Will the future transport will be a software which can be upgraded just like a software upgrade? There is a possibility which we can think of. If you see from an electronic systems point of view, in 1970, only 5% of your systems were automated or electronic systems. Today, it is roughly 40%. And by 2030, it would be 50%. So 50% of your components are electronics, which can be upgraded through a system, through a software upgrade, which has a firmware. If you think about Google nowadays, if you think about Google as a company, we think Google as a software company, primarily a search engine. If I talk about NVIDIA, if I ask you what NVIDIA is, many of you would say, NVIDIA makes GPUs, a graphical user cards. Amazon, Amazon is a commerce entity. Probably some of the IT folks would understand commerce, uh, Amazon as a cloud computing organization. But if you see the Google car, the company which is made by Google Waymo, it is the most valued company in Silicon Valley. In fact, at some point of time, somebody predicted that it would be a $130 billion company. But now the valuation has come down in the last two, three years. But yes, it is still one of the most valued company. And it has started driving or self-driving car, which doesn't require any driver. If you, uh, As I said about NVIDIA, NVIDIA is creating a separate auto division. It has a separate auto division now. So it's no longer only a graphical card maker company. It is also coming into the automotive. If you talk of Amazon, in fact, this uh, article is of 21st June, five days back. Amazon in talks to buy stake in AI truck driving startup. So all those software giants are coming into automobile area. So if those things are coming, are you ready for the future? As an individual, as an industry, as a business, are you ready for the future? If you go back to the King's area, the guy who used to wield the best sword used to have more value. So sword wielding skills were needed at that point of time. Those skills no longer needed today. Today, if you see from a technology maturity point of view, automotive is somewhere in between. Financial service, ICT, uh, those are uh, the matured industry, but automotive is somewhere in between. If you think from an AI point of view also, automotive is somewhere in between. But this speed can be very fast because the way technology is coming, the way software people are going behind those automobile companies, this change can be very fast. As I said, we are going to witness the change of last 300 years in next 20 years. So this change can be very fast. So what are the areas where you can use as an, as an automobile company or as a, a company who is into mobility? What are those areas? You can use it in manufacturing. You can use it in your transportation. Transportation means your driver assist, your autonomous driving. You can gather a lot of data. In fact, yesterday only I was uh, seeing uh, one of the, in one of the forum, I was seeing uh, one of the talk where one CIO said that if you create a newspaper, the actual cost of creating a newspaper is maybe five to six times of the newspaper, but still we get it free because of the advertisement. Similarly, people are predicting the automobile is going to generate that much data which has that much value that you can get the car free of cost in future. You don't have to pay for the car because the data which your car is generating or your truck is generating is more valuable than the value of that car. 
So data gathering is, has a tremendous opportunity. You can monetize that data. As an automobile company, if you have past data, you can think of monetizing that data because data is, as I said, is a new oil. In service areas, predictive maintenance, insurance, if, if, if you are talking about autonomous driving, people are also saying that number of accidents are going to be nearly zero. If that is the scenario, what would happen to that travel insurance or, or insurance without which you cannot drive a car in, in metro cities? For, for driving a car, you require a valid insurance. But if there is an autonomous car which is coming, which has 0% rate of accident, what would happen to that insurance company? How that company would survive? So these are the areas where you can think of with the paucity of time and I cannot touch all the area, but I would suggest there are four conflection points which are going to change the mobility industry as a whole. With AI, with technology, the cost is going to come down. So low cost. It is going to increase the time. It, it is going to decrease the time, sorry. Uh, so, so the time is going to be short. So point A to point B, if you are taking X hours, those number of X hours are going to come down. The quality is going to be better. As I said, zero accident, quality is going to be better. While you are sitting in the car, you are no longer worrying about the traffic. Better quality. And there is a movement which is, going, uh, which is happening about the sustainability. This fossil fuel is not a sustainable business. One, it, at some point of time, it is going to end and it is creating pollution in the mother earth. So people are thinking of sustainable way of mobility. So electric vehicles are coming. And if you see of low cost, if you see, uh, if you, you can calculate it for your own car. With, with a study done by CSE, idle time of a vehicle in India and, and worldwide also, it's 23 hours per day. So 95% of time, your vehicle is sitting idle, specifically your car. So if you think from an industry point of view, your car is, the operating efficiency of your car is only 5%. So there is an improvement chance of 95%. So if as a company, if somebody comes and gives and earns 50% profit out of that uh, vehicle, still your car would be 45% cheaper. And that's a huge money. And this mobility is not going to come in cars only. As I said, when we think of automotive, many, many, many times we think about only cars. It's not going to come only in cars. It is coming in robo taxis. It is coming in trucks. In fact, trucks is a game changing area because today, Trucks are driven by drivers and drivers need rest. So they cannot run 24 hours. They need to have that kind of rest period also. With autonomous driving, probably that is not required. Delivery vans. In US, now there are automated uh, taxis which are delivering pizzas. Buses. Farming is, is one of the very important area where your tractor can work in the field while you are sleeping because the tractor can work 24 hours. So while you are coming in the morning in your field, your entire field is now well prepared. This is also coming into the, the dangerous areas like mining. The autonomous uh, driving technology is available for, uh, this, this is a car from Scania. Uh, which is a, a kind of mining tractor. So, so this is also coming into the dangerous areas, which will also reduce the cost of running that vehicle because humans are no longer required for that kind of job. So what would happen in that future? Should we worry about that? Yes, that future is, would be good. Your car would be a good area of enjoyment. Can you think of bringing something in that area? Can you sell something in that area? People are thinking about that because car is going to be a new social area where you can 
socialize with, with people. So people are thinking uh, how to use that area for selling something, how to have a connected system, how to have a personal assistance, how to have a environment within the car which is suited just only for you. So people are thinking in that area. So now the question comes, what to do? If these things are coming, what to do? And if we know what to do, then how to do? Should we fear about this AI thing? In my view, no. Uh, in one of the book, uh, Seven Habits of uh, Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey says, area of concern and area of influence. So we should work in our area of influence. But what happens, our area of concern is so big that we forget to use our area of influence. If we start using our area of influence, that circle, if we make bigger and bigger, our area of concern will be smaller and smaller. So instead of fearing this AI or technology thing which is coming, we should try to use it. But how to do that? So this is my formula, 5E into 5G. People are talking about 5G in a telecom area. I am talking about 5G from a different point of view. First of all, every journey starts from within. First, you need to educate yourself. So grow yourself. Then grow your team. And we will see from an AI use case point of view how to do that. So grow your team. Then grow your business. If your team will grow, obviously your organization, your business will grow. And you should not leave it only at that point of time. You should grow your community. So together we should, we should uh, grow. And effectively our country should grow. And effectively our world or Mother Earth should grow. So this is a growth formula. But how to do that? Education. Education is primary thing. Educate yourself. Many people come to me and they say, uh, I want to learn about AI. I want to learn about uh, self-driving car. How to do that? Today in internet, most of the things are free of cost. In fact, I was looking at uh, one course in Udacity on self-driving car, which was started in 2011. So in 2011, Udacity has started the course on self-driving car. If you go to Coursera, there is a very famous course by Andrew NG, AI for Everyone. There is a course on Element AI, uh, which is again uh, free of cost. So there are many things which are free of cost, is specific to automotive industry and also uh, towards uh, technology and AI as a whole. So you can educate yourself. Once you have done the education of yourself, your team, your organization, try to do experiments with the AI. Try to take one or two small use cases and experiment with that. Use that use case within your organization and let people experience that power of AI or power of technology and don't say it AI or technology. Just give the kind of experience your user wants, your customer wants, your vendor wants, your ecosystem wants. Give that experience. If they would like the experience, they are going to come back to you. They are not going to ask anything from you. Then once you have seen the good experience of your customer, expose it to more and more number of people. Do it a small and then go for a big bang approach. Expose this, this particular experience, uh, experience or experiment within your organization. And once you have done it, expand it to the ecosystem. So this is the formula which is going to help all of us, not only in the AI area, but also in other areas as well. So from that point of view, I would say we need to start from within. And one very important thing is we need to be consistent. What happens as an organization, as an individual, we start something and then at some point of time, we see that some other thing is coming, some new technology is coming and we focus more on that, we forget this thing. So we need to be con consistent with whatever we do. And now people are talking that, don't talk about cost because speed is the new cost. Earlier people 
used to say that either you reduce your cost or increase your revenue. These are the only two things in a business. But I would say, no, there is third thing also. There is third dimension also, which is a speed. So don't talk about the cost. Talk about the speed. How soon you can do it? Because even if you don't want to do it, you, you are not seeing like a, a dodo that your environment is changing. There is somebody who is going to do it faster than yours. So in any case, you are going to be extinct. So speed is the new cost. So what you need to do? You need to do the experiment, experiment with the technology, experiment with the pilots, experiment with the POCs, make mistakes, fail fast, and fail cheap. Believe me, future is brighter. We always fear of the technology. We always fear that what would happen in the future. But we see only from our today's point of view. We don't see that future is unfolding in a various dimension, in various ways. Before ending, I would like to tell you one story of 1893. In 1893 or 1894, the primary mobility vehicle used to be horse. So there used to be horse cart. And with horse, every two to three hours, you need to give them rest. You need to give them food. So with that, there is a requirement of more horses. In order to run your cart, you need to have more horses. And with horse, there come the manure. Manure, so, so somebody has predicted in 50 years, every street in London will be buried under nine feet of manure. This was taking the data and extrapolating it to the future. So somebody has really done that. And in 1893, actually, this is a picture of March 17, 1893. This was a, a modern street in uh, Latford, which is full of manure. So somebody has predicted that this would happen, but suddenly automotive came, suddenly motor car came and everything which was predicted, which, was, which people were fearing, everything has gone. So what I say, there is a knowledge available in, in the world, especially in the internet world. So use that knowledge to create kind of experience for your customers, for your teams, for your organization. With that knowledge, with that experience, if you are creative, you can bring new dimension to the same knowledge. With that, I end my presentation. If any question and answers are there, I'm ready to take that. Thank you, Dr. Karnatak. That was a very interesting uh, uh, presentation, a lot about a lot of thinking to do about the future. Um, you did mention that, you know, the area where human beings perhaps can utilize the time would be that, uh, you know, they could turn towards the arts, etc. But uh, the Van Gogh's uh, painting, the, the it, it was, uh, it was the painting, the Night Watch. Uh, it was created in 1642. It was trimmed to fit into the door of, uh, you know, at, at Amsterdam City Hall. And so it was reduced in size in 1715. And then recently it has been sort of recreated by artificial intelligence. So it seems that artificial intelligence is taking over this area too. Uh, uh, what do you feel about, uh, you know, what will happen to human creativity and also to jobs in, in such a scenario? So, so there are two things. One is a job, uh, as I said, that if you can define your job, this is not going to remain uh, in the future. But as far as creativity is concerned, yes. So there are uh, experiments which are being done that you feed uh, 100 story into the artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence can create uh, 101 story uh, out of that. But this is what you are giving as an input. It cannot create new emotions because artificial intelligence doesn't have, or any technology has no emotion as of now. It cannot have those kind of five senses which humans are having. Even if we are saying that artificial intelligence is able to do something, it is able to 
see like human, but the process of seeing is not anywhere near of the humans. So the way human thinks, the way uh, human uh, visualize things, artificial intelligence is not doing it in, it in a similar way. Obviously, we are seeing from the outcome point of view, outcome is same. But yes, the process is entirely different. In fact, people are talking about black box AI. That's why uh, there is a concept of ethics in AI, because AI is working based on the data which is going to feed into the system. So if you are putting a wrong data into the system, it is going to make a wrong predictions. So there are biases which are coming, uh, coming in the AI. Uh, I would ask audience just to do one, uh, one simple experiment in your Google. Just type uh, from Hindi to uh, English. So there Google has a uh, facility of translating from Hindi to English. Just write Vaha pilot hai and translate into English and write Vaha nurse hai, translate into English. When you write Vaha pilot hai, Google will translate he is a pilot. But when you say Vaha nurse hai, Google will say she is a nurse. Why? Why can't a woman be a pilot or a man be a nurse? Because data is not there. So AI cannot think the way a human can think, not up till now. People are talking about general intelligence where AI can show the human-like intelligence, but those are the days for, for maybe 50 years down the line, not in near future. Mm -hmm. So you think we need to keep reinventing ourselves, as you just yeah. said, with your five E's and uh, your five uh, uh, Gs. Yeah. So, uh, uh, well, I think that's something that we need to work on. There was one more question. Uh, you said that cars could almost be free, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, suppose I, uh, and this is a question from uh, that has been put up. It says, would I have the option to still pay for my car and ensure my data is not monetized? So people are talking about that. So specifically uh, in the area of privacy, there are concerns. Can my data be misused? So yes, uh, people are talking about that. So there are two kinds of data. One kind of data which is required to run that car. Second kind of data which can uh, have your privacy uh, embedded into it. So people are thinking, yes, can we separate these two kinds of data and keep only the privacy data with you? and keep only that data which is required to run the car uh, to us. So, so that kind of scenarios people are talking, but there cannot be a scenario in future when, when we have autonomous driving car that no data would be shared because if you don't share the data, uh, you won't be able to run the car because car need to work with a radar system or LIDAR system, whatever that system is. And it needs to share a lot of data with, with the ecosystem, with the cameras which are there on the road, uh, the road itself, because the road of the future are going to be different, not like Indian potholes road. Uh, and all those data needs to communicate with that kind of environment, then only that car or that truck or that vehicle will move. So yes, privacy concerns are there. So people may choose not to share that private data, but there are companies, specifically in Silicon Valley, which are being funded, uh, that uh, if people are ready to share their private data, they are going to give money so we are also talking of the scenario where when you are running your car and you are earning out of that without doing anything by just sharing your private data, which are not being shared by many number of uh, people. So, so for a poor country uh, uh, in Africa, uh, people may use it as, as, a, you know, as an earning opportunity by sharing their private data. So, so people are talking about those kind of things in the future. Yeah, so the, the question was that do I can I not share my data or can it not be monetized? It's not so much about sharing as being monetized. So if I decide that I'm going to pay for not, uh, you know, having my data monetized, I think that's an aspect that one might want to look at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so as I given the example of newspaper, if I buy a newspaper uh, in five rupees, if I say I don't want to see the uh, advertisement in the newspaper, I, am I ready to pay 45 rupees for the same newspaper? If I am ready, so I should be given that kind of option. So it's, it's a similar kind of story. If you want to have a free car, obviously you need to share the data. If you don't want to share your data, your private data, probably you need to pay for this. Okay. So, so same, same kind of analogy. Yes, fair enough. 
Uh, Anuj, are there any more questions? Uh, not that I have received. So, Jerry, sir, any question you received on the Exposim platform? And by the way, I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Kamal for a beautiful session. It was an eye opener, and especially the examples and the parallels that you, you know, have drawn. Uh, it's it's really a nice uh, magic eye to the future. My compliments for that, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we'd like to also offer to you a small token, a memento of, of our appreciation for your presence here. Uh, so please do accept this memento. Dr. Kamal Thank you. Thank Kalan, you very much. CIO, RJ Corp, President CIS of India. Thank, Thank you so you. much, sir.